Thanks. Hello, everybody. My name is Andy North. Today we're going to be talking about testing in React and sort of test-driven development in general. Uh, this is something that we're all familiar with, um, but uh, hopefully you'll feel more comfortable with it after today. Uh, a couple of things before we start. My goals for this talk are to show you how to read and write tests specifically for React apps, but a lot of this is going to be general testing stuff that will work uh, across whatever platform that you're using. Um, Test-driven development in general, that's what TDD stands for, uh, is a broad topic and there is a lot of discussion around it. So what I'm saying today isn't going to be uh, the uh, only option available to you by any means. This is just my presentation about one approach to test-driven development. Okay? There's also going to be a lot more stuff on these slides that I'm probably going to go over because I want these slides to be also useful as a reference to you guys uh, as you go about like setting up your first test suites and stuff. So we're going to go through some stuff really fast. Don't worry about that. Um, so what in the world is test-driven development? Uh, TDD stands for test-driven development. And here is a standard pattern for doing test-driven development. What you do is the first thing you do when you start working on an app is you write a test. Okay? You write a test about what you want that component to do. Then you run your tests and make sure that the one you just wrote fails. Okay? Because you want to make sure you're not writing a test that's automatically going to succeed. It means you've written your testing correctly or you're testing for the wrong thing. Uh, then you're going to write some code, run your tests, refactor your code until that test passes, which means that your app is now doing what you want it to. And then you start over again at step one. Okay? That's the basic idea behind test-driven development. So question you might be asking me is, why should I bother with it? Great question. We just finished up uh, doing a project all together, and some of you may have noticed as your uh, app grew, it became more and more difficult to test whether or not it was working or whether you had broken something without realizing it. So let's take an example case here. Let's say you make your first professional app, and it looks something like this. Um, actually, let me switch over to a working version of this app. So this is just a basic app. All it does is lets you leave a little comment here, so you can type in cool presentation. And then submit your comment, and then it's going to show up as a list underneath that component. So if you were working on this, uh, how would you test if this was working? Okay, if you didn't have this running right now, how would you test it manually? It's not a trick question. What would you do? Go ahead, Mike. Sure, man. So you'd load it up, right? Load up this web page, go to it, type in a comment, be like, nice. Submit it. If it shows up below that, great, it's working. So every single time you make a change, if you want to be absolutely sure that your app is working and you haven't broken something, you have to go through that process, which is slow. So if you check things manually, first of all, it's very inefficient. You have to theoretically do that every time you load it up. If you choose not to check that every time you change something, then you run the risk that you've, changed, you've broken something without noticing. So you keep working, and you uh, have broken something. You don't even know that you did it. You might have to go back and change it later. So if you write tests, you have constantly updating real-time feedback that's checking everything in your app that's important to you. Okay? It's very fast. You know if you've broken something right away without having to manually check everything. So question two you might ask me as a follow-up to that. What should I test for? Also a great question. Test for whatever in your app is important to you. And an important rule of thumb uh, in what I was looking at was check functionality but don't police methods. And what that means is Make sure your app is doing what you want it to do. You give it an input, it produces an output, whatever that output is, whether that's a component or just the outcome of an action creator, stuff like that. But don't check the way that that thing is being done. Importantly, because if somebody suggests an improvement or comes up with a more efficient way of doing something in your app, you don't want to have to rewrite your test every time. You want to make sure that if you put in A, you get B out the other end. It doesn't really necessarily matter what happens in the middle. Okay? Meaning, just write tests for everything that you don't want to change inside your app, everything you want to know if it broke. So for example, what would be important? What might we consider important about, important about this app right here? Anybody have any ideas? How would we know if it was broken? Alexis. Exactly. If we type in a comment, we click that button, it doesn't show up underneath. Okay? We'd want to write a test to make sure that that functionality is still there if we change some other part of the site. Right? That's a great example. So you make a big list of those things. Those are going to become your it statements. So, Question three you might be asking me is, how do I get started doing this then? Great question. You've got your app. Uh, if you already have an existing app, um, you can do this. Uh, if you don't have an existing app, then you're going to write your test folders first. But if you already have an existing app, go ahead and go into your app folder uh, inside your main app directory and create a testing folder and create a different testing uh, file for every component that you're testing. That's best practice. Um, then step two is write your first test. Uh, so each test is going to consist of three parts. A describe statement, which is used to group tests together that uh, 
all focus on the same uh, part of your app, an it statement that makes an assertion about a particular portion of that, uh, uh, the thing that you're talking about, and then an expect, which makes a very specific assertion about that it statement. Okay? And I just said that in a terrible way. So let me go through it. Uh, in, uh, uh, let me give you a better metaphor for it. You can read it like a conversation, every single test that you see. You're going to be basically saying, like, hey, describe your cool new app to me, or a part of your cool new app. Then the answer to that question is an it statement. Well, one of the things it does is it shows a comment box. So then you would say, OK, so if I look at it, I will expect to find a comment box. I will expect a comment box to exist. Okay? So if you ever get confused looking at a test that someone else has written, you can break it down like this. Find the describe, find the it statement, and find the expect that goes with that it statement. Okay? Those three things all go together, and that, can, that will run a single test for you. Um, all right. Expect statements specifically also have three parts. Okay? They have a component being tested, so you expect whatever it is that you're testing. Then they have a middle part called a matcher. So this matcher, for example, is to have class. And then we have our target value, which in this case is comment box. So we're saying we want this component to have the class of comment box. Okay? If you want to see other matchers, you can go into the Chai library, for example. There are a ton of those in there. Um, and you can see really good examples there. I linked those at the end of the presentation if you want to dig into those also. Okay, so this is stuff I'm not really going to go into, but you can look at the apps later. Here are some things that you can test. Here's how you might test that components have rendered properly, for example. There's one thing I didn't talk about, and that's before each. Before each is a function that runs before every function below it. Okay? That's something that Mocha is going to give us. Okay? So for example, in this case, we're using before each. That's going to be a function that gives us some dummy props for these components that we're rendering. Right? So if you want to test a connected component that has props, you can give it dummy props so that it can render properly, and you can test that the output is what you want it to be. You can simulate events. At the end of this, I'm going to show you how to set up a simulate function that will allow you to simulate things like clicks or text changing and things like that. You can test your action creators. Now, this is breaking our pattern a little bit um, because, like I said, we're testing outputs um, rather than the methods to get those outputs. But action creators are sort of an input and an output. So it's probably a good idea to test all of your action creators as well. But it's really simple. You just test that your action creators all have the correct type. And if they're working correctly, they should have the correct payload uh, once you've created that action. Right? You can also test your reducers. Um, so basically, you would take a dummy action and run it through your reducer and make sure that after it comes out, the state of your app is the way that you want it to be working. Okay? And if you want to look at any of those in more detail, all these have a little example code for you to uh, look at on the slides afterwards. Cool? Uh, you guys have probably seen Chai and Mocha before. These are two very common libraries that we are going to, uh, that you can use for testing. There are other ones out there. These are just the ones that I'm familiar with. Uh, Chai is a library for uh, writing tests and assertions. That's what gives us expect and our matchers. Mocha runs the test then. And specifically, it loads up each test, runs them one by one, and cleans up afterwards, make sure you don't have any values hanging around. That's where we get describe, it, and before each. Okay? So, Last question. I'm going to go through this very quickly. How do I set up this cool testing suite that uh, Andy has been talking about? Because it sounds great. It's a great question. This is actually really complicated. And I'm going to suggest as you first get started with this stuff, maybe don't write your own testing suite. Um, the way I learn stuff best is by finding something that works and then taking it apart to help understand it. So that's what I did for this. I found a really good testing suite um, that Steven Greider wrote for a course on Advanced React that I'll also link you to because it's a great course. Um, I'm going to link you to the document, the testing suite document that he wrote, uh, and also the course where he explains it. And I'll explain just the basics of it right here. So basically, we have four things. Uh, we're going to set up our testing environment to run like a browser in the command line because we have to render stuff, but we do not have a document or a window right, where things would render in. So we set up a fake one in the command line. Here's how you do it. Uh, step two, we're going to build a helper function that renders our components to that fake DOM, because right? we have to render them. Um, we have to write a uh, helper function that will render them for us. That's what this does. We also wrap everything in a provider so that we can render um, connected components, right? Because uh, a lot of our components we're testing are going to be connected. Step three, build a helper function that simulates events and attach it to our jQuery object. This one, we can actually get test utils from uh, the React. Yeah, they're just in the React library. They do a lot of cool stuff. So test utils has a simulate function. Uh, a simulate method that you can use for this. Um, and this just makes sure that it's attached to our special instance of jQuery that you would create in this testing suite. Last thing you'll set up is chai jQuery. 
Okay, this will allow you to use jQuery selectors to search through your fake DOM that you just rendered to make sure that those things that you're rendering on your fake DOM are showing up the way that you want them to in a fake way. Okay, does that make sense? Probably not. Don't worry about it. I went through that all really fast. So here's where you can look to dive into this stuff uh, more in depth. These are all links on here. So um, this testing suite I took from Steven Grider's Advanced React course, if you have time, check it out. It's only 10 bucks. He explains this testing suite setup that he uses. Um, but you can take a look at it on his GitHub because he has it a public, publicly available file. Um, more advanced test-driven development, we can add, look at stuff like mocks and spies and stuff like that. I didn't really have time to investigate that much in uh, depth where I have confidence that I can tell you guys about them, but I looked up places where you guys can look uh, once you start to feel comfortable with this stuff. Big takeaways our stuff I've already said. Test, describe, and monitor the parts of your app's development that you care about, so you can test for whatever you want. As you and others make changes to your apps, uh, make changes to your app, you want those tests to not break as long as you're producing the same outputs, as long as you're rendering what you want to render. Um, so keep your tests flexible, okay? Um, make sure that you're not telling people how to do stuff, just testing that they're doing what you want them to do. Anybody have any questions? Cool, guys. Thanks very much.